Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, we're going to try that uh, Lunar Supply vehicle again, so Moonport Resupply, and I'll double check that we have electric charge up there. And we also have a Lunar Mini Probe. I wanted to land a little science probe, a very small science probe, on the pole of the moon so that we can get some more science. We really need more, more science. Uh, I feel like, uh, well, I mean, we have some technologies queued, but we could do some more. Anyway, so uh, that's there. And of course, we've got another Orpheus 2, which will help with the crew rotation thing with the moon. And I'll probably have some other lunar vehicles if we get these three done. So first thing, let's try and resupply the moon. And so rolling this out. And actually, the lunar mini probe will be ready. Um, oh, oh, I see. Uh, it had the message for the SOI change of the failed one because we had already transferred it to the moon on a crash trajectory. Uh, so uh, we won't be able to recover that. Okay, so yes, it's going to proceed. And actually, it might have uh, exited uh, the SOI. The Earth SOI, actually. I don't know if it was actually going to crash into the moon or it was just going to be shot out. Okay, well, let's launch and then we'll figure out the window. That's not a problematic inclination. We can fix that along the way. Throw up. SAS is on. And... Ignition. And launch. I thought about doing KOS with these launches. As you know, I tried that out in an episode, but I'm doing so much KOS stuff on the EDB Space Program uh, on Sundays, and of course on those videos, that I think I'll lay off of it in here. Okay, going well, and booster separation coming up. Separation. Okay, they're off. Uh, one was a little bit further out, I wonder why. Alright, core stage. Set. Set. And ignition. And the J2 is a go. Fairing separation. Probably need a little bit more pitch. This doesn't have a whole lot of thrust to weight ratio. Okay, we are approaching orbit here. Pretty good trajectory overall. We could easily carry a heavier payload, it looks like, assuming that delta V reading is correct. Maybe it's not, though, because it's not reading up here in stage delta V. Okay, 247 by 231. All right. Well, let's plot for the moon. All right, I've plotted our course. Uh, we have uh, our moon port one as a target, and I've added some normal component here in order to make sure that we get close to moon port one's inclination, and also to make sure that uh, we hit our periapsis around the moon right where we cross Moonport 1's orbit so we can do the rest of the inclination change right there. Uh, our approaching difference is 8.3 degrees so we'll do that at the same time as we burn for orbit. Okay so with that I'll time warp and then we'll get, begin our burn. Now taking a look at our Delta V stats in MegJab it turns out that this stage doesn't have enough to complete this burn so we'll need the payload to do some more of it. So we don't have more fuel than we need. We have less. So we'll have to work on this system. All right, RCS. Oh wait, let's make sure that's all locked up up there. RCS on, node. Fuel seems to, no, it's very unstable. It should have been reading red over here. Interesting, and normally when the fuel is un unstable, the icon here turns red, but it wasn't. Let's uh, 
First, a little bit forward to be sure. And then ignition. Okay. We have ignition. That's Florida right there. Basically, we went around once. The question is how much of the fuel we get to actually transfer to the station. Of course, we are mainly transferring food, water, and oxygen here. We could fill that tank up with more fuel if it turns out that we didn't need to transfer other supplies. Okay, falling short as expected. I don't think we have time to wait for the RCS to provide extra amounts. So let's uh, shut down. Separate. RCS on. Uh, RCS on. Unlocked fuel. And forward. And ignition. So we've got 3,000 in here. Again, it's just a matter of how much we end up transferring to the station. Clearly it's got enough to rendezvous. Alright, inclination difference looks better than expected and we have our tangency. Okay, we're on our way to the moon this time. And we've got electric charge and everything. We've got solar panels, we've got antennae, we'll even do these reflectrons, though I don't think they're strictly necessary. On we go to the moon. Actually, you know what? Uh, we could we could shorten the time that we're taking on everything. I mean, we want to do a lot of moon missions before that Jupiter transfer window, and we've already built another uh, moon mission. We've got the lunar mini probe here. Let's let's start rolling that out. It only takes a, eight hours because it's tiny. It's really a tiny mission, uh, similar to what we're doing in the EDB space program now. That's a little bit more expensive though because of the higher tech engines. Okay, so that'll be rolling out and then it'll notify me and then we'll launch that while while we're on the way. Okay, I've been informed that our lunar mini probe has rolled out to launch pad. So let's turn to that while it is on its way. Let's add a new alarm for this. So actually we had to wait a little bit longer because the launch pad had not finished reconditioning by the time this had rolled out. Uh, so we had to wait a few hours longer and now our relative inclination is 14 degrees and while it's possible to swing that, um, that, that that's a lot. So I'm got time warp and well you can see the tight avionics situation on this rocket. It's only a 140 ton rocket uh, but time warping through a day means that we'll be closer to when that one gets into the SOI of the moon. So we have to be careful. Of course, uh, Kerbal on clock, clock should stop us, but just in case, there's a tiny, tiny lander, and the goal was to make a small system here. It may very well fail, but you know. Throw up, SAS is on, and it's just a single NK15, uh, NK33 there and then some boosters. And actually it's two sets of boosters. So, and they're all caster ones, unfortunately. Ignition. And go. Three SRBs and then we'll have uh, three air light SRBs. Okay. Airlight SRBs are go. It's, there's a bit of a wobble. Even though we're right on prograde. Let's see, it's not quite where I whoop, where I want it to be. Now that's not right either. Okay, off they go. That's uh, just the main engine. Hopefully it can control itself. That is a bit dodgy. Yeah, these should be with that stage. No, all of you. There we go. 
It's just an NK-33 and then an RL-10 stage. And the RL-10 completes orbit and then uh, transfers us to the moon, hopefully. Hopefully everything will go right. Yeah, we probably need to turn quicker with the SRBs on, but they, uh, they weren't giving me too much confidence since they were, uh, we had deviation from the right heading. Okay, we could probably aim for separation of the fairings a little bit earlier. Okay, off they go. Uh-oh. Off they go. Whoa! No kidding. Flatten out even more. Got some... Well, I mean, we could throttle down. A bit. But you can see it definitely needs to be flat to not uh, produce a huge time to apoapsis here. The RL-10 is slow, though. Okay, separation. And ignition. RL-10 stage, 6,000 meters per second here. Definitely enough to get to orbit and then transfer us to the moon. Uh, max burn time for this RL-10 is 7 minutes and 50 seconds, so... We have the max burn time here. RCS ports. You can see our probe is on top here. Um, it's just, uh, what you call it, one of those early control cores. And as much fuel as it's 0.2 tons can command. Um, little commutron spiking up, two solar panels, and then next up is a Ranger Block 3 core, and that's supposed to get into orbit around the moon. Well, I, no, sorry, that's supposed to start its descent. Uh, this is supposed to get into orbit around the moon. So orbit with this uh, Delta Avionics package, which is also actually controlling this as well. There's no avionics on this stage here. And then uh, that is starting descent, and then that's finishing descent. So, even right now, I would like to manage my... Well, I, I could probably leave it flat, but uh, the time to apoapsis is very high compared to our burn time here. So if you wanted to get into a nice circular orbit, probably pointing down is a good idea here. Okay, you can see I'm pitching down to get the vertical speed down a bit. Time to apoapsis is still very high. Okay, and again, we're trying to get the vertical speed and time to apoapsis to zero by the time we make orbit, and that's what we're doing here. And we also want to be flat as we approach orbit. And done. Uh, 240 by 220. So, now planning for the moon, we've got 3,800 meters per second, so that should be fine, more than enough. And we could have probably put some more fuel in the transfer stage, maybe. But then again, uh, the problem is uh, it would outstrip the avionics for this. The combined avionics for all of this with this fully fueled was just at the limit. So uh, all of the avionics was just at the limit for the rocket and for every possible part of it. So yeah. Anyway, plotting for the moon now. Okay, well, unfortunately, because our lining up with the moon was too good, in order to get a nice pull orbit, we have to add extra normal component to it. Uh, that doesn't really result in too much more. It's like a net 100 or so meters per second more. But this is our approach to the moon now. That should hit the poles. And yeah, uh, we should be ready to go with the centaur stage. Well, centaur-ish stage. And uh, just time up a few more minutes and then we can transfer. Should be good. Uh, let me make sure that everything is locked up here for now. Uh, well, I can't really make sure everything. There's too many t uh, little um, tanks up there. So, a node. Great, that's really looking like a powerful RCS port right there. Okay, ignition. that didn't take too much out of our lander fuel. Well, there is some. 
that's the smallest RCS port I have, I think. 45 newtons. Still looked pretty powerful. In relation to that little probe, it's powerful. Okay, coming close to the end of the burn here. And stop. Okay, we probably went too far. Okay, that looks good. Now, let me uh, replenish the fuels up top. Uh, I worry about ship manifest because it always makes a whole lot of noise. So let me not use that. Wish I didn't have so many tanks up here though. Well, that should top off that. Okay. Don't think anything else was used. Right, we don't want to... I don't know. We should have enough electric charge for everything actually. If you wanted to hang on to this for a little while longer we could. It's got some good fuel in. Probably more than we needed it to have. Yeah, I mean, well, let's just make sure that we are replenishing electric charge once we get into daylight. And if so, we'll carry that along with us for now. Yep, it's all good. It probably, yeah, well, you know, it could be useful. All right, so we'll leave this be. Let us add it to our alarm clock. It'll enter Lunar SY in three days, which is plenty of time for us to deal with Moonport resupply. All right, so let's get to that. Okay, here we are in Lunar SY with our initial orbit matching plot plotted, and we are approaching. Now, the question is whether there's going to be any communication problem at all, because we are going to be on the opposite side of the moon from the Earth, but we're hoping that all of the other satellites will uh, help out. Oh, no connection. Well, we'll see what, what happens. Maybe we'll pick up something. Maybe we'll have to burn a little bit. Oh, no, we picked up something. Good. Alright, node. And ignition. So this should fix our inclination and leave us in a loose orbit to rendezvous. Uh, there isn't actually a uh, clear rendezvous just yet, but we'll keep an eye on the closest approach distance to see whether that decreases and then maybe we'll have a rendezvous from that. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. it's following a node that it doesn't need to. Um, just hold orbit retrograde right now maybe? Or maybe I should just manually do it. Uh-oh. It's trying to quick save or something. Alright. Um, yeah, let me just manually do it. Oh, our lights are bright. That way I can fix the inclination as well, but we're getting a good closest approach distance, or better one, anyway. So let's work on that. Test where it is the appropriate direction to fix both. Uh, no, it's this way. Up, oh, it's going up now. All right, well, less than 20 kilometers anyway. Let's start off with that. Safe apoapsis and periapsis, very important. Okay, let's go there. Presumably, since we're this close to Moonport 1, we shouldn't have communication problems. Well, I don't know. We could still have communication problems. Yeah? Okay, well, now we have communication problems. Okay, well, we'll wait on that. Oh, we have reacquired. So, brief communication blackouts. Still annoying. Okay, slowing down appears to be bringing our closest approach distance down, so that's good. Well, that's close enough for now. We don't want to go too fast. This is pretty fast. Oh, we're lighting up the moon. Okay, closing in on Moonport 1. We're delivering less than half of the fuel. It's not great, but I guess it's necessary. And, uh, yeah, our light's not really illuminating it very well right now. 
somehow that patch is illuminated even though we're pointed right at Moonport 1 and I definitely tried to tilt these so that they were pointed you know somewhere around here-ish but maybe it's a little bit too cross-eyed I don't know uh, we can see two lights there but that doesn't seem to be where this is pointed I mean we're definitely anyway <sighs> I don't understand okay where are things and where can we dock closing to 200 meters where we can start selecting docking ports yep there's one we could use this Apollo docking system to dock on that one but maybe we should just uh, go for one of the the propellant only ones okay we have targeted a propellant only docking port okay those lights must be from some other probe I mean it can't pot maybe it's from the station? No, I mean that doesn't seem pointed right. Some, it seems like from some other probe. Oh, right. Signal delay. Oops. The one thing that signal delay does is the SAS. Okay, well we got docked. Actually pretty fast relative velocity considering. But it docked. It's uh, directly opposite of Valentina's vessel. And let's try and uh, refuel Valentine's vessel directly. Let's see if it has en it's delivered enough for that. Well, I mean, it's not like Valentine's vessel was a hundred percent out of fuel, but uh, yeah, uh, taking a look at the numbers, uh, we delivered uh, 1,900 arizine. It would take uh, 2,100, 2,200 to actually fill this up. So we're about 300 short is all we are short here. So almost enough to completely refuel the lander if it was completely out of fuel. Oh, well this refueling process is gonna take a while. Alright, I'll be back when it's done. Okay, I've transferred what I could. I've left a little bit of Arizona N204 in this so it can deorbit itself. Uh, Moonport 1 currently has 295 days of supplies for the four crew that are currently on board, including Valentina. And uh, Valentina's vessel is ready to land, should we want to do that. That is a dangerous mission though, so we'll have to... Well, we'll have to plan on that. But first, we've got a little probe on its way, so we'll take care of that first. And interestingly, uh, the station's fuel is not topped off. You can see Oh, actually you can't see there. Oh, we've got a little buggy interface situation there. That's probably going to get worse, but um, even though this only has a tiny little bit of fuel left, um, we didn't actually fill that tank there. So it's got uh, reasonable room uh, for fuel. Yeah, plenty of room so that this can be refueled multiple times. Uh, as far as food, water, and oxygen though, uh, there isn't actually much storage space here. There's this area here. Uh, well, of course we didn't use that much. But you can see uh, the resupply vessel can almost completely refill this particular tank. So, and the, the, there's uh, room here actually in these modules. Might as well fill that up now. Okay, here we are in Lunar SOI with our tiny little probe that only carries the light instruments here. You know, the micrometeorite detector, thermometer, and stuff like that. Uh, so no goo container or anything like that, but I think this will be our first landing at the pole, so it should be alright, it should be worthwhile. Uh, assuming it maintains connection. Um, a boil off did not happen because we weren't uh, focused on the ship, but we won't take advantage of that. And frankly, it looks like uh, we are on a good trajectory entering Lunar SOI. So the best thing to do is probably just to chuck this at this point. Um, it will end up doing what? Uh, going into solar orbit. It's not the worst situation possible. Um, you know what, actually, if we could uh, have it crash into the lunar surface, that would be a little bit better, just from a debris standpoint. As a policy, I only get rid of debris that would have been destroyed by, um, you know, re-entering the atmosphere eventually or something like that. 
So the stuff that's left in um, solar orbit, I leave because there's nothing that's going to be pulling it down unless something actually pulls it down. So we've got we got a lot going on there. Okay, so now it's going to crash into the moon. And let's use one of these tanks to fill all this stuff back up. Uh, those look fine. Yeah. Okay, there, there aren't any thrusters that are backward facing on that anyway. Okay, so now separation. Okay, and this doesn't show how it's going to go. I just want to make sure that the separation didn't knock it into a proper sort of orbit. Okay. And RCS is, no, I, I want it on. And forward. Okay, that's good enough for me. Inclination 90.33 degrees. Seems polar. Maybe. I mean, it depends how you look at it because of the 23.5 degree tilt, but it looks polar to me. Let's go over there and retroburn. Hopefully we'll maintain communication. We've got 3,776 meters per second, which should be enough to uh, make orbit and then land. So, yeah. We have no excuse. Well, we have a tiny little excuse in that it's actually really hard for this thing to... It's so light that it's uh, precarious. It doesn't have many RCS thrusters to maintain. Okay, I'll stop making excuses and just get a, get on with it and hopefully things will turn out well. Let's verify the existence of a polar biome, shall we? Lunar, lunar seas still. Oh, South Pole, there we go. So which would be better, South Pole or North Pole? Um, right now we're only getting communication because of Moonport 1 though. Maybe the North Pole would be better, but it's in the dark too. At least the South Pole seems to be facing away from the Earth more than the North Pole is. Okay, that's pretty good. 62 by 55, 200 meters per second left. We'll definitely have this crash into the ground. Um, yeah, okay. Well, let's see. Let's see where we have communications and where we don't. Lowlands. It seems like this. Uh, the North Pole is definitely better. How big is the North Pole? So we sort of start off here. That's pretty big. Alright, I think I know where we can do our stuff for landing. Okay, North Pole. Let's see. Retrograde, please. Okay. Sell the fuel down. Ignition. Let's just land somewhere around here. Gotta remember about the delay. Okay, so this is a one kilonewton thruster. Uh, I don't know why that, that port is doing something. Oh. Well, it's trying to turn... Oh, boy. We may have a problem. Um, is it, like, so close to the center mass that it can't tilt it? Uh, those ports are supposed to help it... its orientation. Hmm. Or uh, is the fuel so unbalanced? Yeah, I think the fuel is unbalanced. Well, I mean, there's no throttle on the one kilonewton thruster, but at least it looks like things are getting a little bit better here.
or not. Um, is there any way we can shift fuel around? I, I, I'm trying to figure out which way would be good. I feel like that didn't help. Oh, we're over to Luna Seas now. Oh, shoot. We passed the... Oh, no. Now it's the South Pole again. Oh, it's confusing me. Apparently there are lunar seas around here. We just want... And now it's saying North Pole. We are supposed to be over to North Pole. So why was it saying South Pole? I don't know why this had less priority than that one. It's strange. Okay, still over to North Pole. Let's hope it stays that way. There's sort of a basin here that could be a crater of some sort. Could be considered a sea in someone's eyes. We also don't want to land on some edge, though. The probe should be able to take it, really. It's a tiny little thing. Looks like maybe around there is where we're going to land. Hopefully. I mean, in that crater would be nice, but I'm worried that that crater might be not the North Pole. Oh, we're having deviations again. Okay, I don't think this wild tumbling act is healthy. Uh, let's jettison. Activate this one for the thruster. And try and do it with this, though. Maybe it's really badly balanced, too. Uh, maybe SAS will do a better job? Wow. I didn't give this as much control authority as I thought I was going to with these little thrusters. Okay, I think I've got it again. Good times. Should still have plenty of fuel. Bottom-facing RCS thrusters would have been better than the one kiln unit thruster at this point. But also would add mass. Wonder. Oh yeah, we can do uh, some in space just above the North Pole. We haven't really done that before. Well, if you got fuel, you might as well use it to keep the thing safe. Oh, and infinite ignitions as well. Ouch. A little bit of a skid mark there. Okay, but we are on the moon. We are properly situated. We can turn RCS off. So it doesn't wiggle so much. And uh, log temperature. Uh, transmit. 24 science there. Log radiation. Transmit. And actually, if we were time warping, this probe core would go into low power mode, so the electric charge is balanced. At least in time warp mode. Transmit. So if anything were to change at the North Pole for some reason, we could do a subsequent reading. And collect impact data. Or, I guess, I don't know, there's three options here. Oh, okay. Doing that. Record impact data. Mm, well, okay, that's just. Oh, I, okay, well, I don't know what the difference is, but okay, well, it's doing something. Let's analyze telemetry and transmit that. And that's it. We have done the science. It was a cheap mission, it was a fairly light launcher, 140 tons. 
And I don't think uh, we fulfilled any contracts with it or anything, nothing that fancy. But we, we did get science, so mission accomplished. We have landed at the North Pole of the Moon. So, uh, next time we'll see what we do, but there'll be more lunar things. We could land Valentina somewhere, probably not the North Pole. It would be better to land it somewhere in line with the station. But yeah, that's definitely an option. Or we could uh, do the crew rotation thing, which we actually have a contract for. So, yeah, the hu well, it says human orbital, purple orbital thing uh, it just needs to we need to separate the crew pod from the station have it hang out for 20 hours and then return it back to earth of course we will want to send other crew over here so yeah anyway on that note i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time